three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft on a decade-long voyage to visit the planet Pluto and then beyond. Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for your online coffee break. What you're hearing is a clip from the song, New Horizons, a new song being released on New Year's Day by my very special guest, Dr. Brian May. Brian is not only famous for being the legendary Queen guitarist, but he's also an astrophysicist. He joined me today to discuss his passions in music, physics, and photography, including his new book, Mission Moon 3D. Hey friends, we have another exciting coffee giveaway for you today. We're giving away some Bones Coffee. This is some delicious flavored coffee. We have white Russian, we have white chocolate peppermint bark, we have Jingle Bones all kinds of delicious flavored coffees and all you have to do to be eligible to win is to share this episode on social media so share this episode on facebook instagram or twitter and you could be eligible to win make sure you share it by december 31st 2018 and we'll pick a winner now back to the show online coffee break thank you so much for joining me today oh thanks for doing this we haven't spoken before, have we? We have not. So this is a great honor for oh. me, uh, not only because of, of course, you know, my interest in Queen growing up, but also I'm a huge amateur astronomer fan. And I, I guess uh. what I love is I love your story. I love how you were, you know, working on your PhD in astrophysics when Queen became an, you know, international sensation. And then I love how you went back and you got, you completed your thesis about 10 years ago. I just, I'd love to know what drew you to astrophysics in the first place? Well, it's childhood passions. Um, I had a passion for music as a child, and I also had a huge passion for the stars. And probably the greatest inspiration of all was a program called The Sky at Night, um, which was an English program which ran for 50 years yes, with wow. the same presenter. Do you know about that? You probably do. Was that the one with... I'm trying to remember, was it Patrick Moore or was it not? That's right, yes, exactly, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I used to beg my parents to be allowed to stay up and watch it because it was quite late. It was 10 o'clock at night. Yes. <laughs> and to me, that was the most inspiring thing in the world, uh, just to be able to see the the world through his eyes and not just the world, but the whole universe. And um, strange enough, I was very inspired by the music which he'd chosen to start and end the program as well. Really? by Sibelius. Mm -hmm. So music and astronomy always had a kind of um, uh, a link for me. I, <laughs> I, I'm a very instinctive person, I suppose, but somehow <laughs> that was just completely inspiring to me, the combination of those images and that sound. And that's the, the area which I guess I'm in right now, which is amazing. Yeah, see, I love how you combine your passions. And, and speaking of that, you know, I just spoke recently with uh, Dr. Alan Stern, uh, as you know, the upcoming flyby uh, New Horizons, yes, it's going to fly by the Kuiper Belt object, MU69, which we call the yeah. Ultima Thule. Now, to commemorate this, I understand uh, we have a clip of it, but you have that, a new song that's coming out on New Year's Day. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how that came about? Yeah, it was a fantastic opportunity, um, as you say, to combine the passions. And... Um, it came upon me in a rush, really, <laughs> in a <laughs> strange that? way. You know, somebody was asking me how it happened, and I don't really know quite how it happened. The idea came from Alan, because he said, can you make some music for the flyby? Um, he just kind of threw that at me uh, about three months ago. And at the time, I thought, hmm, I think that's going to be difficult, because I can't see myself writing a song about ultimate Thule, or Thule, or how you pronounce it. Sure. It didn't immediately come to mind. But as I turned it over in, in my head in the next couple of weeks, I started to get a vision because this really represents the furthest that the hand of man has ever reached right. in terms of, of photographing an object in the Kuiper belt. This has never been done before. And I started to think about the motivations for mankind for doing this. Um, you know, human beings have this desire to, to explore and to go places that have never been visited before. And that, that's mm -hmm. always been the case. Um, so the song in my mind 
somehow was going to be about that. It, it's going to be quite broad. It'll be about the mission in particular, which is something extraordinary, Absolutely. but it will also be about the whole NASA thrust and about mm-hmm. human exploration in general. So then I have all these ideas floating around in my mind, and I have a kind of musical feeling, and I put, a few, uh, I put some stuff down in the studio, which was purely instrumental, mm-hmm. but it gave me that feeling of rushing through space. And then... As sometimes happens, by pure coincidence, I went out to dinner with my old friend Don Black. I don't know if you know Don, but he's a world-famous lyricist. He goes back such a long way. He he wrote the lyrics for Born Free, for instance. Um, So many amazing songs over the years, Mm -hmm. uh, including a lot of work with Andrew Lloyd Webber. He's a great friend, and we sat there having dinner, and I mentioned this project. So Don looked at me kind of quizzically, and said, oh, I'll have a think about it if you like. And I went, yeah, absolutely, do that. (laughs) Anyway, the next morning, I get up, and in my email box is an email from Don Black with two verses, very simple verses, uh, just the lyrical ideas. And that was enough. That just kicked me into the place I needed to be. Suddenly, I knew what I was going to do. I rushed down to the studio and started singing. Now, I haven't really sung (laughs) as a solo artist for, for many years. Yeah. But this inspired me. You know, mostly I've been writing stuff in the last few years for my friend Kerry Ellis, mm-hmm. and we've made a couple of albums together. So I, I tend to think, I tend to write for her voice rather than mine. So I wrote something which was way too high for me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> but gradually I managed to adapt it, and the whole thing just started to come together. I, I just got excited, and, and uh, the thing has really grown into something which I feel very... Um, very good about. Wonderful. Well, I love the clip. I cannot wait to hear the full version when it comes on New Year's Day. That's going to be so exciting. Now, speaking of of, of New Horizons, um, are you going to be present at uh, APL when it flies by uh, MU? I am, yeah. I was lucky enough to be there uh, for the Pluto flyby, which is an experience I will never forget. And I was there when those first images came in, and I was able to actually put together the first stereo pair to get a, a 3D picture of of uh, Pluto and Pluto. Yeah, I thought that was amazing. I was just, yeah, there's stuff that I will never, ever forget in my life. You know, I'm so privileged to be around in those situations. So, yeah, Alan's invited me to be there on June on New Year's Day, and I will be there. And at 12.02, after the, the gong yes. rings for New <laughs> Year, we will be playing this track. Oh, my gosh. We're actually going to be there. I'm going to be there as well at APL. Yeah, I'm going to be there, yeah. Wow. And they're going to, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you this yet, but we're going to beam it out to the probe. Oh my gosh, um, awesome. Along with, all, all, along with the fans' messages. And I'm very excited for so many reasons. Because also on the track, I have a couple of little sound bites from Stephen Hawking, who, who was a, a great friend towards the end. And um, I got permission from his daughter to use these little clips. So his voice will be beamed out along with the track, right out to the furthest place that that anything like this has ever happened. That is amazing. Isn't it like 5 billion miles away from us, I believe? Yeah, it's extraordinary, isn't it? It just, you know, and it does inspire me, this, this feeling that, that there is no limit to, to right. how mankind wants to, to reach out into the universe. That is true. Now, you mentioned about the, th- the first 3D image of Pluto that you put together, and I have to admit, I, I really am interested. I do have your latest book, uh, Mission to Moon 3D, ah. and I love how oh. you um, actually are, I guess, your partners with the company, London Stereoscopic Company. Uh, you sort of revived that company and you're celebrating your 10th anniversary. Can I ask, what got you into the 3D part of photography? Another passion of yours. <laughs> it's childhood stuff. Yeah, things just hit you when you're a kid, I suppose. I opened a box of cereal, <laughs> Weetabix, when I was a kid, and out <laughs> dropped this little card. And on the card were two images side by side, two little pictures of a hippopotamus. Mm-hmm. And I thought, what's all this then? And it says, send away one and sixpence in a packet top to get your stereo viewer, your 3D viewer, which I did. Yes. And then I put the card into the viewer and looked through the lenses. And suddenly, instead of two little flat pictures, I had a window through which I was looking. And I felt like I could touch that hippopotamus. And it was just, again, a life-changing experience. I thought, okay, you can do this with photography. Why isn't everybody doing this the whole time? You know, if you can photograph in 3D, why would you ever bother to photograph in 2D anymore? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, that feeling has never left me, that the feeling of magic when you can combine two images, one for each eye, and you get a stereoscopic in-depth view of whatever it is that you're looking at. To me, it's, it's, it's magic. 
<laughs> and that's what I think is incredible because you talk about these flashes of inspiration and you also seem to <laughs> react pretty quickly uh, from your song New Horizons, but also the Mission 3D, uh, Mission Moon 3D book. I understand that was a pretty rapid process from conception to finish on that. How long did that take? Yeah, we go on these mad journeys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know quite how we survive, really. Yeah, most of those images I processed while I was on tour with you know doing Queen and Adam Lambert right. so between like 3 and 5 a.m. I would be working on those images and most of those have never been seen in 3D so that was an exciting journey in itself I mean no one's ever managed to put a, a book together of such a comprehensive um, group of 3D images from those Apollo days See, what I love about that, too, is it's not only Apollo. I mean, you start way back with Yuri Gagarin and go all the way through, and it even has your uh, 3D image of Pluto, which I, I just love. I think it's yes, fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's a kind of potted history of, of space exploration, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I, I really enjoy it. I love the fact that I can hold it in my hand now, and it actually did materialize. Uh, and I, and we, we've had some great reactions to it. You know, people have said it actually feels like being on the moon. Um, which is great. <laughs> Absolutely. I understand. You actually developed the, uh, the stereoscopic viewer that's, that's in the back of the book. You designed that yourself? I did, yeah. I didn't invent the stereoscope. Right. Uh, Charles Wheatstone did that in 1832. Mm -hmm. But I uh, designed this particular version of it, and it is really a 21st century version of a Victorian stereoscope. And, uh, you know, you can, do very, you can do 3D in many different ways, but the Victorian way is actually still the most perfect. If you get it right, you get this incredible impression of reality and depth. It's, of course, it's the, the forebear of virtual reality. And yes. the, viewer that I, the viewer that I make now, you know, we, we make it um, in Sunbury upon Thames, Middlesex, and in China. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's, um, it works very well as a virtual reality. And so we have a, a version of it which we put out, which we call... Um, which we sell, which is called the uh, the VR the Owl VR kit. And it's been very successful. And, and what surprised me, I guess, when I was reading that is how long three D viewing has actually been around. You know, like you said, the eighteen hundreds, and it sort of went away. And I think with your uh, efforts of these, uh, the Queen three D book, and then your Mission Moon three D book, I think it's neat to kind of get back in mainstream people realizing how wonderful that is. Yeah, it's been a, a mission of mine. I feel like I'm an evangelist for 3D because I love to share that magic with people. I always dreamed of it when I was growing up. And, of course, it's very hard to get hold of Victorian viewers. There aren't very many of them right. around. and they, They're expensive and they're delicate. So it was my dream to make a, a new version, uh, a, a new system, which would transmit that magic to to people in, in the modern day. So now, yes, I have my owl viewer. I have lots of sets of cars, and we publish books which are illustrated with these stereoscopic views. So it's a big thrill for me. It, it, it's a realization of, a, of a, an ambition I had all my life. Absolutely. When, what are you most looking forward to as New Horizons flies by ultimately? <laughs> I think I'm, I'm looking forward to that moment when we first experience uh, what this object actually looks like. Uh, we can all guess, and it yes. seems to be something which which is irregular in some way. Perhaps it's a little like the Rosetta, Rosetta's Comet, you know, which is a very mm -hmm. sort of dumbbell-shaped object. It might even be two objects uh, rotating around a common center of gravity. Then who knows what it will be like? We don't know what color it is, how, what, what the surface looks like, etc. So the first moment when we see a picture of it. And for me, of course, I want the two pictures. I want the baseline. I want my my picture as it's just about to get there, and then the picture which is like maybe I don't know, five minutes later, well, I am looking forward to seeing that first 3D image that you, you create of, of this object that I hope is going to get a better name because it's <laughs> they keep going around and around. We need something easier than MU69 or I know Ultima Tully is a, a nickname for it. Uh, Brian, I just, I, I just want to thank you again. It's been an honor uh, talking with you. Um, just looking forward to your continued work. Can I ask real quick, just what's next for you? A lot of stuff, really. Um, in the immediate future, immediately after... Um this incredible opportunity to see the flyby. I'm hoping to get to the Golden Globe Awards because we've 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 got two nominations um, nice. for Rami as as best actor and for the cast, which is no wait a minute have I got this wrong no for for the picture for the picture. So 
So I'm hoping to be there. And, and I figure it's a one-off experience in life, and I'm very fortunate to have these opportunities. So I'd like to be sitting there, whether or not we win. You know, the fact that we've nominated <laughs> is, is just extraordinary. Yes, yeah, so Bohemian Rhapsody. We just saw it last night. My wife and I went and saw it and just loved ah, it. So just fantastic. Yeah. Brian, again, I, I want to thank you so much for your time today, just for taking time out. It's been an honor speaking with you. Thank you, Chuck. really appreciate it. Online Coffee Break. Wow, what an honor it was to speak with Brian today. His new song, New Horizons, is going to be fantastic. I cannot wait until it's released on New Year's Day. Also, I highly recommend the movie, Bohemian Rhapsody. It's out now, playing in a local theater. It's a fantastic movie. Also, his book, Mission Moon 3D, is available at your favorite bookstore. I highly recommend that as well. If you'd like to learn more about Brian, just go to his website, brianmay.com, or follow him on social media. I want to thank him for joining us today. I want to thank you for joining us today as well. If you'd like to comment on today's topic, just go to our website, onlinecoffeebreak.com, or give us a call at 317-862-4700. We'd also love it if you'd follow us on Instagram at Online Coffee Break. And we'd appreciate it if you'd rate us on iTunes or your favorite podcast application or share this episode with your friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. See you next time. God bless and Happy New Year.